Helen Harrison, the director of the Pollock Krasner House and Study Center in East Hampton, and I'd like to take you inside the studio where Jackson Pollock and Lee Krasner created their masterpieces. Follow me. Okay. This building was originally a storage barn for fishing equipment, and it stood directly behind the house, blocking that beautiful view. Now, when Jackson had it moved and set up as his studio, he put a wood floor down, and he started working on that floor as his preferred surface uh, in about the fall of 1946. He liked to lay his canvases out on the floor, work on them from all four sides, walk around the canvas, and as he put it, be in the painting. Uh, sometimes he literally was in the painting. He would uh, step right into it if he needed to reach across one of the big canvases, but of course he did a lot of small canvases as well. Now Lee preferred to tack her paintings up on the walls, but she didn't start using this studio until after Jackson died. Uh, he was working in here from 1946 until he died in 1956, and then she took over the space and she worked in here from 1957 until her own death in 1984. And she would tack her canvases up on the walls and work on them vertically. So you'll see marks that she left uh, on the walls from her very energetic technique. She also used a lot of energy, a lot of spontaneity in her work. And of course, Jackson uh, very famously used the liquid paint, working on the canvas horizontally and creating a beautiful tracery and network of colors and shapes that sometimes spilled over the edge of the canvas. So behind me on the floor here, you will see the remnants of that process, the colors and the gestures that he left on the floor from 1946 until the floor was covered with another layer in 1953. The building was renovated that winter and turned into a year-round workspace. Originally it had no heat and no electricity, so he couldn't work in here at night and he couldn't use it during the coldest months of the winter. But he had this white wallboard put in, the fluorescent lighting, and a stove, and had the floor covered with masonite. And then everything was painted white, so it was a very nice clean white workspace, and underneath that new floor covering we have all of these marks, everything that was left from the six years of work that he did here before he did that winterizing renovation. So it is a very interesting document of his process. If you're familiar with his work, you can actually see where some of the pictures were lying when he was working on them because certain colors are obvious. And also with Lee's work in the same way, you can see where the marks that she made spilled over the edges of the canvas and are left on the walls. And we have labels that will tell you where some of those different pictures were and what, what their titles were and where they are now. Of course, many of them are in museum collections around the world. We don't have them here, but you can certainly go and visit them when you go to the Museum of Modern Art, the Metropolitan, the Whitney, the Guggenheim, and many other collections. The best way to see the studio and to really appreciate the floor and the walls is to go right into the studio space and walk on the floor. Now to do that, in order to protect the surface, we ask people to put on these little foam slippers which slip right on over your socks and protect the floor from abrasion and also from the perspiration that might be on your socks or your bare feet. So that's the purpose of the slippers and they do a great job.